Good afternoon, everyone. As we have already completed all, almost chapter number three, we are at the end. And as we all know that direct questions are a bit easy enough to at least attempt. But when it comes to case studies or case problems, they are a quite tricky one. But certainly as we have already studied, so I think and I hope that it is going to be fun and it is going to be easy enough for you to solve these cases. Because nowadays when we talk about business studies paper, it is not quite direct, right? Things like uh, case studies, case problems, the question is a bit twisted. So, so it actually tests your intellect, your understanding of the particular chapter. So let us go on and see uh, whether you are able to solve this or not. So uh, let me just read out the first case. The first case says, Jagriti Oil Refinery Limited, an Indian company is doing very well in the domestic market. It wishes to expand its business operations in selected overseas market. That means we know that this company, which is Jagriti Oil Refinery Limited, it is an Indian company, right? And it is doing quite well in the domestic market. That means within the country, it is doing very well, but now, what is the scene? Uh, they are planning to expand its operations. That means they are planning to move into another country, right? The management of the company is confident that its products match the international quality standards. But the management has so far no experience and distribution of network of operation in the foreign markets. Suggest the management how to tap the resources. So basically what is the you know uh, case saying? It is saying that there's a particular company. It is an Indian company. It is doing quite well. It is earning a lot of money, huge profits and everything. But what is happening? They are planning to you know just uh, expand their particular business into foreign markets. That means they want to go into further countries as well. Right. So this is the scene. Now but the management is not very confident enough that we will be able to you know go into another country and diversify our operations or not, will be able to earn that much of profit or not, will it be fruitful for us to expand the business or not. So all these uh, you know, dilemmas are being running into the management's mind. So now what is the particular suggestion you could give that when we talk about this particular chapter, I know the answer is visible, but let's just think about it rather than just looking onto it. Let's just think that if a person is having a particular business in a particular country, that is India. So I want to diversify my own business into another country, right? But I, you know, certainly I don't have that much of the confidence that my business would prosper or not. Because obviously, let's take an example. I have a business in India and I want to expand to another country, Australia, let's suppose. So if I want to, uh, you know, expand my business into Australia, will it be fruitful? Because I don't know what is the distribution system, what will be the you know consumer needs there, how the you know product could be diversified. So all these things could be one of the reasons. So let me just see how many of you can answer. See, point is your understanding. If you're understanding the thing, it will be easy for you to answer. So let me just see. Don't give me just one word answer that, okay, by joint venture, we can do this. Everybody knows, okay, by joint venture. But I want the certain, you know, crux, you can say the certain reason why. So I got the first answer from Ankita Singh. Let me just read it out. It should enter into a joint venture with the company abroad, which have a good market knowledge and have good amount of consumers. Absolutely right, Ankita. <coughs> Sorry. So the main reason why a company should have a joint venture with another company is to have the knowledge about the market, to have the knowledge about the consumers to increase. Yes, I got the answer from Darshika also. She says by joint venture as it may increase the resources and capacity and it could access the technology also. Absolutely right. Because in India, they might be using certainly different kind of a technology or certainly different kind of a mindset, right? But when they will be going to another country and they will be diversifying their own business, they will be expanding their own business. It will be difficult for them to prosper, it will be difficult for them to distribute into the other markets, right? So if they have a joint venture with a company, it will be easy for them to know, to learn, to have the knowledge of that particular uh, country business, right everyone? Okay, so I hope the, uh, till here it is okay, you understood this one, because when we talk about a joint venture, so it basically means that you're going into another country, Right. And you will be diversifying, you will be expanding your own kind of business in a way that it turns out to be fruitful for you. 
Right. So, uh, what about the other students? I got the answer only from Ankita and Darshika. What is the take of another stu uh, other students here? Anything you would like to mention? Let me just see how many of you can, you know, uh, just brainstorm and just put out different kind of answers. Anybody else who would like to enlighten us with any kind of other answer or we shall proceed? Okay, so I got uh, one of the answer from Harshika Bansal as well. Access to the market. Absolutely right. One of the reason is access to market as well because they have the particular knowledge about the consumers. They know that the people mostly they come here and they shop and they buy the products from here only. So again, access of the market, that means knowledge and more intellect or you can say more diversification of the market with in respect to taking care of the customers. Okay, so good enough. Let's proceed to the second case. The second, six, uh, second case says, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg decided to invest $50 million in Baiju's. I don't know you guys are aware or not. Baiju's is basically a learning app. You, you might have seen the advertisement of the, on uh, TV. It actually comes uh, right now. It is very, very popular. It is coming nowadays very much. So Baiju's is basically a learning app. Okay, wherein the teachers are there, they teach you online. Okay, so yeah, so uh, Facebook decided to invest 50 million in Baiju's, a personalized learning startup based in Bangalore. So if you guys know or not know, Baiju's is basically a startup which has been started and it is based in Bangalore. Okay, it is from India only. So what kind of funding is this? Let me just see, it is a direct question. It, it is basically, okay, fine, we have the examples of Facebook and we have the example of Baiju's, but it is a direct question. When a particular company, which is very, very famous, it is investing in a startup or in a different company, okay, and that to overseas. That means Facebook is in California, it is in US, and then it is investing in India in, uh, in a startup based in Bengaluru. So what is this kind of investment known as? I got the answer from Dhuk Bansal, foreign direct investment. Yes. So I was actually, you know, expecting all of you to answer this one because this was a direct question. See, if a particular company which is overseas and it is investing into another company, it is referred to as foreign direct investment. Yes, I got the answer from Darshika as well. Foreign direct investment is the answer. Right. So uh, let us proceed with fourth case now. Uh, let me just read it out for you. The government permitted foreign participation in Indian companies through economic policy 1991. Global healthcare group Bupa, that is basically in Singapore, invested 23% in equity of Max India Limited. Kindly read it very, very carefully because this, this name you must have heard too many of times. Or if not, you must have heard it in the advertisement that is coming on the television. Because nowadays, you know, lockdown is there and corona cases are increasing. So the insurance company, they're trying their level best to, you know, uh, you know, take advantage of this particular situation, you can say, and, you know, attract a lot of customers. Because nowadays, if you can see, you know, just Google it somewhere or something. So if you can see exact number, if I talk about, it is approximately 38% of the people has have actually started doing this. They started going for insurance because earlier people were not too much, you know, curious or you can say too much interested into insurance. But nowadays, seeking throughout and seeing the, you know, particular situation, the current situation of the, you know, the current scenario of the country, they are investing into insurance, right? So this is again one uh, most important name that is coming up nowadays. Okay. So yeah. So uh, I was saying global healthcare group that is named Bupa. It is in Singapore. It invested 23% in the equity of Max India Limited. Right. It resulted in Max Bupa Health Insurance Company Limited. Okay. Government increases the cap of foreign participation up to 49% in healthcare companies. Because when we talk about Max Bupa Health Insurance Company, obviously it's a healthcare industry. Right. We're talking about healthcare insurance that the people are doing insurance for the particular health. So Max India took the advantage and divested. Divested is basically what? It sold its additional 26% equity to Bupa. That means if you can just see, let us uh, let me just uh, you know clear it in a very lame language so that you can understand. 100% 100% we know 
दैट एक फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट होगा और एक के पास फिफ्टी वन परसेंट होगा राइट right? तो अब क्या हुआ स्टार्टिंग में जब उन्होंने साथ में कोलेबोरेशन किया तो उन्होंने क्या किया ट्वेंटी थ्री परसेंट भोपा ने इन्वेस्ट किया आपके मैक्स राइट सो द रिमेनिंग रिमेनिंग पोर्शन वॉज विथ मैक्स ओनली बट क्या हुआ गवर्नमेंट ने इंक्रीज कर दिया कैप दैट मीन्स पहले का जो गवर्नमेंट थी वो बोलती थी कि आप फॉरन कंपनी से अपनी कंपनी जो आपकी इंडिया में कंपनी है या आपकी कंट्री में कंपनी है उसमें यू कैन नॉट इन्वेस्ट मोर देन ट्वेंटी थ्री परसेंट बट उन्होंने वो कैप बढ़ा के उन्होंने फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट कर दिया कि ठीक है वो ओनर नहीं बन सकते फिफ्टी वन परसेंट से बट येस दे कैन बी द इक्विटी ओनर ऑफ फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट तो भूपन यू नो वॉट डिड दिस टू मैथ्स मैथ्स ने जो अपना ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट है वो भी उन्होंने भूपा को दे दिया राइट सो अल्टीमेटली इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द लास्ट थिंग तो क्या हुआ फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट हो गया भूपा का एंड फिफ्टी वन परसेंट इज विद मैक्स सो दैट इज द नेम विच कम्स एज मैक्स भूपा हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस कंपनी लिमिटेड इट इज अ वेरी फेमस नेम ओके सो नाउ आइडेंटिफाई द मॉडल ऑफ बिजनेस बिटवीन मैक्स इंडिया एंड भूपा now i am not reading out the answer it is visible obviously but let me just see how many of you can get the crux what is how do you get to know that this is a joint venture by which line or by which you know statement or by which you get to know i got the answer from paridhi right it's uh, she says it's joint venture as it's a partnership between two firm absolutely right paridhi when we talk about two businesses two or more businesses coming together to work collaboratively it is referred to as joint venture ankita as absolutely right as it sold its shares to get its partnership absolutely right ankita anybody else see when it comes to me if somebody asks me how are you able to judge that this is a joint venture when you talk about the name just underline or you know just look at this line it resulted that means it resulted that means the partnership it actually had some crux that means it resulted into a different name that is max bupa health insurance company limited we know that two companies are coming together and they are forming a new company which is referred to as max bupa health insurance company limited right so that is the reason it is a joint venture i got the answer from uh, darshika also it invested in a new market absolutely right because they are investing they are the ones who are been there in singapore but they are investing in a company which is there in india right shall nice let's come to the sixth uh, case study now let me just read it out many companies set up their business after indian government took initiative to open the economy for fdi that is for a foreign direct investment as the milestone of economic policy 1991 so ऐसी बहुत सारी कंपनीज थी जिन्होंने अपना बिजनेस हमारे इंडिया में सेटअप करना स्टार्ट किया जब इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी 1991 आई जिसमें कि हमारे पास लिबरलाइजेशन uh, हो गया प्राइवेटाइजेशन हो गया और ये सब चीज हो गई दैट मीन्स ऑल द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन वर रिड्यूस्ड टू अ वेरी यू नो टू अ वेरी लोअर एंड ओके बिल्कुल ही रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन दे वर ऑल गॉन राइट एंड इट रिजल्टेड इन टू फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉरन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट अगेन आई टेल यू जैसे कि हमने एग्जाम्पल अभी पढ़ा था सिंगापुर सॉरी फेसबुक का एंड बाइजूस का सो बेसिकली अगेन सम ऑफ द कंपनीज मोस्ट आई से मेनी ऑफ द कंपनीज नॉट सम मेनी ऑफ द कंपनीज दे केम इन टू इंडिया पहले वो बाहर की कंट्री में थी बट जैसे ये नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन की इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी आई दे स्टार्टेड इन्वेस्टिंग इन इंडिया एज वेल right and it is referred to as foreign direct investment so these companies include obviously these are very popular names they include pepsi coke samsung lg mcdonalds nestle etc we all know these companies they are quite famous i you know either we have visited them or we have you know known about them or we have seen any advertisements for them we have seen the hoardings for them so we are aware of these kind of companies what are these uh, these companies known as I got the first answer from Dhruv Bansal. He says MNCs, that is multinational or global companies. Yes, that is absolutely right. These kind of companies which invest, okay, which invest in another country and they come and they perform in the another country, they are referred to as global companies or you can say multinational companies. Anybody who could define what a multinational or a global company is, let me see your intellect or how much you can grab or how much you can retain. Anybody, I'll wait for your answer. Just a small line, a small definition of what exactly multinational company is. 
I got the answer from Pariti, right? She says multinational companies or global enterprises because it's operating their business in more than one country. Absolutely right. We talked about that MNCs are basically the companies which not only operate in their own country, but they are here to operate overseas. That means they are here to operate in other countries as well. So that is the reason it is referred to as multinational or a global company. Absolutely right. So let us just proceed. These were the main cases that I wanted to discuss. Okay. Okay. I, Ankita also says something. Multinational companies set up their centers in various countries so that it gets skilled labor and technology at cheaper rates. Absolutely right. And also to attract the market, to attract the customers, to have the access to the particular market. Right. So that they also know that, okay, if you talk about H&M and Zara, earlier people used to uh, go out of country and all the you know famous people the rich people you can say the famous personalities like actor actresses or some people they went out uh, in another country and they used to buy from zara and h&m but now we can also access zara, zara and h&m why because it is operating in our own country if we go to noida we can see zara and h&m we go to delhi we can see zara and h&m so these are all the you know, uh, companies, MNCs, which have actually tried investing in our own country and they have grabbed the market. Earlier, if you talk about, let's just take an example. Earlier, if uh, H&M was, uh, you know, just there in USA, let's just suppose. But it started, uh, you know, going on and investing in Australia also. <laughs> Sorry. And it started operating in India also. So what happened? The people of India, the people of Australia, they also started buying. So ultimately, it is a profit for them as well, right? Because they are attracting the customers and they are giving a particular market for the people to invest in. Okay, I got the answer from Dhruv Bansal also. Uh, an MNC has uh, facilities and other assets in at least one country other than its home country. Absolutely right. Amazing point. When we talk about a MNC, it is a company which not only has its operation, its assets and its office in one country, but other than that, it has, uh, you know, its office in one more other country other than the home country. Just like if we talk about Facebook, the Facebook office is not US in the US. The office is there in Delhi also, in India also. So why it is there? Why? It is there because they are, this is an MNC and it is working out of country as well. Not only in the home country, but it is working outside there as well. Okay. So this, these were the cases I wanted to discuss. Now I have another cases also. Let me just open up that, them as well. Yes. So this is another PDF. Uh, this is the book I am actually going through and it is quite nice. I'll give you the, uh, what you can say, I shared the PDF with you guys. Okay. Once the class is over, I'm going to share this. So let us just talk about this one also. This is the whole case study which has been present in the whole book. So I liked it a lot. So let us get started. The first case study says, with enactment of LIC Act 1956, an autonomous body, Life Insurance Corporation of India, was formed. The Act defined its powers, duties and functions. It has a separate legal entity. It is fully owned by the government. That means, just underline this word, it is fully owned by the government. It has independent financial policy and can raise funds by borrowing from public and government. However, it is not subject to any budgetary accounting or audit control like railways. So it is not at all like railways. Its annual report is presented in the parliament every year. So now if you have studied this particular topic very, very carefully, following features we have studied, let me just go through it. Yes, these are the you know, main features. So if you are aware of the features, you will identify which kind of a public sector enterprise is being talking about, right? Because obviously this is a, a, a public enterprise which is not like railways. It is a public enterprise which actually gives its uh, you know, financial statement or you can say annual report every time, every year to the parliament. So anybody who could tell me which kind of um, uh, this is it, it is? Let me just zoom it up a bit, right? Let's create some curiosity. Just try one more time. Fine, I think now the answer is hidden. No? We like this one. Okay, 
So I'm waiting for your answers. Anybody who can tell me which kind of a particular, you know, uh, public enterprise it is. Okay, so I got the answer from Ankita. She says it's a statutory. Yes, it's an example of statutory government. It is basically a statutory corporation. But one more thing, let me just give you. See, when we, you know, it's quite too much zoom. Your eyes will strain and my eyes too. So let us not keep it like this. We are just discussing it. So let's just keep it like this one. Okay, so when we were talking about this one, see, I'll tell you one more trick how to solve uh, these kind of case studies. If you see the further questions, what does it say? Name any other statutory corporation. Say two features of statutory corporation. So now you can get an idea. At least you can get some hint out of it. And okay, what kind of a public enterprise it could be. Right. Let's talk about the second question. It says, name the act under which it is formed. So now I think this does not need too much of brain. Yes, LIC Act, because it is already mentioned in here. I got the answer from you. It says LIC Act 1956, it has already been mentioned. See, these case studies come in approximately five to seven uh, marks uh, question. And, uh, you know, the reason why we discuss these cases is basically first to increase your knowledge. The second, to enhance your intellect. And the third one is to, you know, have an in-depth you know, understanding of a particular chapter so that any kind of question, if it turns out to be, you are able to answer such questions. Okay. So let's go on with the third one. It says, name any other statutory corporation. So if you remember, we have already talked about various examples of statutory corporation in the other PDF as well. So many people, it has already many examples of same. So the example is Oil and Natural Gas Corporation of India, which is ONGC. Okay. Now it says, state two features of statutory corporation mentioned above. So now let us just go through it and let us see what kind of features are we talking about. The first is, it is not subject to get any budgetary accounting. That means, usko koi paise nahi milte kahi se. Right? Uska matlab kya hua? We have studied the features. It says, financial independence, you can say, financial autonomy, you can say, that it is the one who has to, you know, certainly get its money, get its, uh, you know, financial requirements from itself only. Right. And the second one is basically separate legal entity. Why separate legal entity? It is basically, it is fully owned by the government. It has independent financial policy and can raise funds by borrowing from public and government. Its annual report is presented in parliament every year. Now, let me tell you one more thing. If you know, suppose you know 10 features of this one. And if you write any four also, you will be getting the marks if the features are right. Okay, so this is also one thing that we wanted to discuss. Let me just see which page number has the second case study. I actually liked it a lot because it was having the case studies in between so that it is nice for, uh, you know, the better understanding, you can say. Okay. I think we have the first case study here. Okay, let's talk about Sony here. Let me just zoom it a bit. So it says, Sony Limited, now Sony, everybody knows Sony, right? Sony Limited is a leader in electronics. It is, it is registered in a company and its business operations in many countries of the world. Its headquarters are in Japan, that is in Tokyo. Now just read it very, very carefully that it is operating in many other countries also. Its headquarters in Japan, mein hai, but it is actually working in other countries as well. So, we have the first hint, mil hai, right? To manage its branch and subsidiaries in different countries, the company employs trained and professional managers. They always make use of latest technology to remain leader in electronics, right? So, the first question comes up here is, name the type of enterprise mentioned in the above case. Now, trust me, I want each and every student, I repeat again, each and every student to answer this question. It, regardless of whether it is visible to you or not, it depends on your understanding. I want the answer from you guys. Name the type of enterprise in the above case. What is type of enterprise? So I've started getting the answers. Well, I only got the answer from five students, five or six students. What about the other students? Yes, it's a multinational company or you can call it a global enterprise. What about the other students? You don't know what an MNC is? Yes, I got the answer finally from Ambika and Kushi also. Good. 
so when we talk about sony it is basically working in other countries also it is not just uh, you know limited into its own uh, home country which is in japan it is also operating in other countries as well so it is an mnc the next one says say the state where where the headquarters of sony is located now this is actually self yes i got the answer from group japan yes darshika one shukla absolutely right it is in japan it is already mentioned in the case study group gupta also nice so it it is actually nice you know when you guys answer reason being because at least i know that you are attentive and you are listening to me okay so this is what basically the second question was it was about the headquarters the next question comes up is state two benefits of sony mentioned in the above paragraph so two benefits obviously if we talk about this this paragraph the only two things that we talked about in this two uh, in this two three lines is basically first the employment of trained personnel right and the next one is the latest technology right so yes so either we could say trained personnel is one of the benefit or you can say efficient management whatever you want to and the second one is use of latest technology use of sophisticated or latest technology okay so you just need to go through this case everything will be mentioned in here your first question if you are able to attempt the first question trust me you are able to solve the second third question fourth question not a problem the first is the identification this is where you need to brainstorm your mind and you need to find out exactly what it is okay everyone so these were the cases main cases that i have actually wanted to discuss this pdf i'll be sharing with you okay after this uh, class i'll be sharing this pdf with you so that you can just go through the cases there are two more cases the one is with mahindra and mahindra and the second one is of the dmrc which we talked about triple t so this is one thing that we already have discussed a bit so you just go through it just in case you have any doubt we are going to discuss it in the further class tomorrow okay so um, let me just stop sharing the screen i'll share the pdf soon with you okay